And so continuing with this series of um, tools that I picked up at, uh, at uh, Creativation, Paper World Creativation 2024, I'm going to look at this brand new product from uh, Karen Markers. Karen Markers, and we have it. It's a real brush. So this was quite funny because I, <clears throat> I walked out onto the, the shop, onto the, the, the the exhibition space and as i walked down they were right there and i was like oh hi sylvester and he said we have this brand new brush we'd really really love you to test now of course this was saturday morning i had an exhibitor's badge which meant i could get in before nine o'clock and i was able to test the brush pens before anybody else tested them and it was it was really quite wonderful so obviously you saw that that initial shot um which is this and <clears throat> I'm going to use the my PS Scribe pad, my lining template, and the Bean Fang um, marker paper because I think it's really important to see these colors on a light colored stock as well as a slightly darker colored stock. So the great thing about these brush pens is that they they're different from the original Karin marker um, brush pens that most people know simply because they have um it's it's a real brush tip so so that real brush tip is really important because it gives you a very different um feeling and sense to what i call um the spongy tip brush pens and of course those of you who follow me you know that i have different names for these tools so this is you can see it's a, a counter changed color. So that means, you know, they're using blue hair to tell you that that's your spongy tip brush pen. Let's zoom in on that. So that's, that's the brush tip that most people know. I call these spongy because most people call them felt. I tend to call them spongy because they're spongy. They might not necessarily be felt. And I call these real ones um, I tend to refer to these as um, as filamented. Now, I make this distinction because when I use a real brush, I tend to call that, you know, either a, a, a real brush or a hair or, or, or fur or hair, but I tend to call it a real brush. And I tend to call these ones that are made with man-made filaments, filamented. So you can quite quickly see, actually, you know what, before we do it, let's start with the packaging. I love this little box. So I'm, I'm waiting for the large set to arrive, which will come soon. Let's just uh, zoom out. <clears throat> so that's, that's the 11 basic colors that you get in this beautiful little box, which is so cool. Um, obviously, it's quite sturdy. It stands up on its own. Can lift that off you can see that i've already taken two colors out of it which is the blue and the black uh, and it's it's a really cool little box um no i mean you could stack it like this if you want i love the fact that you can you can have it uh upright or you can set it down so it's so it's uh horizontal so that the markers are always um, nice and wet. You can put that lid back on and you can store it this way. You can store it horizontally so that it helps to keep the ink flowing in the markers. Now, this is just the, the simple color set and um, the pigmented ink color set. There are acrylic ones and metallic ones so once i get those i will do a little video on that for you right let's let's look at the writing uh, compared to these two um these two types of shapes that you're accustomed to so most people know the brush pen like this uh, a lot of people use it on its side like this And you get this really sort of nice, rich, as they say at Karin Markers, juicy kind of deposition. Um, so this is a, a Bean Fang pad. So of course, I'm also testing to see which papers work. 
So let's uh, let's grab a Canton pad and see how it works on this as well. Um, so some little pinpricks there from ruling up with the lining template. Ah, wrong one. But let's use the one that you're accustomed to seeing, which is this. Now, of course, you can you can do a more sort of thing with this more sort of brush like letter and you know, building a verse all that. So let's look at how it compares to the real brush. Of course, you saw me do this earlier on. Most people tend to hold their brushes on the side. I tend to hold mine more vertically, so I get And if you want to use it for lettering, you can just remember to press, twist, pull, and lift to get it back to that tip. And I, I was really impressed when I tested this brush because normally when I test a tool, I generally just do three strokes and that will tell me what the tool can do. And that is one, press, twist, and pull, two, and so that tells me how fine I can write with this tool. <clears throat> so I know that I can get that really nice with this tip. It also tells me that based on the size of the um, based on the size of the brush ball based on based on this area but i don't really want a line sort of approaching that that's really the whole brush tip on the page i really so that's my kind of maximum because if you're pressing harder than that you sort of push the bristles out of place um let's just grab a little little rag and twist that on there but I prefer to twist it and clean it on a piece of cloth because that helps to keep the bristles um, the filaments more together. <clears throat> so we can do some brush writing. You really see the bristles working. Um, I keep going back to the cloth to just sort of twist it on that just to get it, uh, just to pull it back into place. We can, uh, and this this also tells us what size we can write at. So I really wouldn't want to try and work at this size. I, I can, so that's what that is. Just about eight mil. The lining template has markings on it for ruling. But I wouldn't want to work at that size. Now, this is a good size to work at. Work at. What is that? That is uh, 18 millimeters. So that's a nice size to work at with this tip. And of course, if you really want it to work quite large, That's a really, really lovely X height to work at. That is one, two, that's, that's about 25 millimeters. <clears throat> now, of course, you can press harder and produce a bigger letter. And the tip really allows that. Now, one of the things that really surprised me about this tip is how it moves around the overturn and the underturn. So what you're seeing is something that's really quite important. Now, most brush pens 
give you a little bit of trouble here. So what happens is as you, uh, sorry, as you come up, the bristles, they roll over and push. As you get to the bottom, they come under and they flick. What this real brush pen does is it comes up and it pulls in on itself and then you can apply pressure. It gives you that really lovely sort of movement up and over and around and down and under and around. So you get this really lovely hairline into shade, um, which I was really impressed by. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm very, very excited about these brush pens. Um, I, I have not tested them properly. I haven't started sort of adding water to them and seeing how they blend. And uh, actually, you know what? Why, why don't we just try it right now? So let, oh, wow, look at this orange. <laughs> this is great orange. Ah, the other thing I forgot to show you is this, right? So look at this. So you can see, you can see, obviously, like the other brush pens, how much color you have in there. So I've been using the black quite a lot. And you can just see, oh, sorry. You can just see that liquid in there, and I'm going to show you. Ah, oh, there's the black ink. So I've used quite a lot of this black ink, um, which, which is really brilliant. Uh, so let, let's look at the orange. So this is the orange. Wow, it's a really lovely orange. Now, these brush pens are different. The kind of ink that you have coming out of them is very different as well. Um, if you do some really hard flicks on them, you can see how you really get that kind of brush feeling to them. Get that really beautiful brush stroke. If you compare that to the <clears throat> to the spongy tips. The feeling is very different, so you really get that kind of brush-like feeling. Now, let's uh, enjoy dirty fingers. So the ink doesn't dry immediately, so just be careful with that. <laughs> so let's take uh, let's take the purple. So there's a really lovely purple in. And let's apply it. To I'm just brushing that purple on with orange. I need to zoom out a little bit for this. And you can see that's really sort of, that's really starting to, to bleed out. Very, sorry, this. I'm on camera. Stay still. Stay still. You can really see that really starting to bleed out very quickly. I know, and I know a lot of people struggle when they when they if they're holding the brush on the side. If they come up around that there. This here is usually quite problematic and it sort of held its filaments quite nicely. So I'm going to, I'm going to do an ins, an inside edging. And the tip really holds itself quite nicely. Very exciting. Very nice. Very nice. Nice indeed. Lots of fun to be had. Um, so let's, let me show you the colors in this basic set. So we have obviously this orange that you've seen. We have this purple, which clearly has some orange in it. <laughs> uh, we have this beautiful blue, which I have on my fingers now. <laughs> Brilliant. Just there. Um, 
There are two greens. That's nice. Nice bright green. And there is this darker green. Now, I sort of decided to do this without testing them myself, without, you know, checking to see what works and what doesn't work, because it's kind of nice to just do this as a demo and figure it out as it's going along. And this is the pink. Oh, that's nice. And this beautiful sort of aqua blue. Oh, look at that color. Uh, here is the red. What? And here is the brown. And here is the blender. So they have a blender that allows you to blend two colors together. Obviously, the tip gets a little bit dirty. And then you can just, you can just get rid of that color by running it through onto a piece of paper. Just remember, don't forget, press, press, twist, roll, tilt, lean, and pull. Pull all your brushes back to a nice sharp point. So <clears throat> I hope that uh, that little play with these uh, new Garin um, real brush uh, uh, brush pens, I was going to say markers, but they're not markers, um, starts to open up your understanding of uh, what Karin markers can do. So what the Karin marker brand is doing, um, and they've given us some really nice real brush pens. Of course, at the show, there's a Oh, there was a full set of them. There were tons of these colors. They were brilliant. Um, and you also had lots of other things that they had on, on, on show, which I, I actually have over there, which I will do a nice big demonstration on so that, you know, you get to see the range of products that they've come up with. And it's really quite amazing. A ton of them work on the PA Scribe black and gray pads. So they have these new sparkle gel pens and... They have some more solid gel pens, so I'll wait until I get the, the the big set so that we can go through that together, and then I'll show you how the other ones work on the black and the gray pad. So thanks so much. I hope you I hope you enjoy this. Leave a comment below. Uh, let me know what you think about them. If you have any questions, please leave questions because the guys at Karin will always answer them. Um, you can tag them or tag me, and obviously if you leave a question or comment, I will see it. Um, and I can tag them if it's something a little bit uh, more more technical about the ink and about how the filaments work. Ah, just one other thing. So <clears throat> I've been using the black quite a lot. And be really careful with how you're using these. So just so did you see I just sort of pushed and pulled and twisted and I pulled that back together to bring it back to a nice point. And um, you can see there is a... Ah, wow, that's great. So there was a stray hair that was sticking out of the brush and it's, um, I pressed and twisted and it's pulled back in to the main brush ball, which is brilliant. Now, I, I've been a little bit harsh with this 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 particular one because i've been carrying this around with me um and i've been writing on napkins and other bits of paper just be just be careful with the surfaces you write on because if you're writing on a coarse surface it can affect the filaments and um, because the the roughness of the surface will cause the filaments to become a little bit hairy i mean this is typical for any brush pen or any any brush that you're using uh, and it's typical for even um, even the spongy tip markers so lots of manufacturers make um, marker pads and the marker pads are smoother so that they don't corrode the tips of your real brushes uh, or your, your filamented brushes real brushes 
or any kind of spongy um, or felt tips that you're using.